Hey everyone, my name is Chris. This is the 256 lab for the green aldol reaction. Uh, so for in this actual lab, we're gonna be doing the aldol reaction using two acetylpyridine and paranitrobenzaldehyde. Uh, the base that we're gonna be using is sodium carbonate, and we're going to check how different temperatures affect this reaction. So we're gonna have one setup that's at room temperature, and the other setup is going to be somewhere between 60 degrees Celsius and 65 degrees Celsius. So what makes this an actual green reaction? For this reaction, we're gonna be using sodium carbonate as a base. Um, it is a pretty weak base, um, uh, not a lot of environmental impact on that. It's pretty easily sourced and just generally cheap. Uh, and the other part of this reaction that's green is the use of water as a solvent. Um, so again, water is cheap, we have it everywhere, not too big of a problem to get. Um, typically in the labs that we've done, we use solvents such as dichloromethane or acetone or methanol. Uh, these solvents, although they're good for the chemical reactions themselves, they aren't the best environmentally. Um, they produce a lot of waste uh, and the waste is not always easily taken care of. Uh, so for this reaction, like I said, uh, what makes this green is the use of sodium carbonate and the use of water as a solvent. Okay, one more important thing to note uh, before we get started with the experiment. Uh, for this reaction video, we're going to be showing you guys both the elevated temperature and the room temperature reactions. Uh, but for your actual in-lab report, you only need to take observations for one of the reactions. This is just to make it uh, simple to grade, um, so it doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, it's easier if you just do the observations for the elevated temperature reaction. Um, but make sure that for your actual final report that you include the results for both reactions. Okay, so first we start out by weighing the p nitrobenzaldehyde. And we weighed out a 0 0.609 grams. You can see that it's a yellow solid. Okay. All right, so we've already added the water and the stir bar to the 100 mil round bottom flask. Now we're going to add the 2 acetylpyridine. So, what you have to do is take your pipetter, press it down onto the tip, it's attached, and you we already set it to the point. Four, four, eight mils that we needed. So all we have to do is bring it down into the solution, press it down, bring it up, take it over, and then press down. And now we've added our two acetyl pyridine. Okay, so here we have the elevated uh, temperature setup. Um, we got boiling water to heat the reaction, and it, right now it's right around 60 degrees Celsius. Um, so we got the P-nitrobenzaldehyde, um, and I'm gonna try to dissolve it as best as I can uh, with hot methanol. And we might not get it completely dissolved, we just want it to get it as dissolved as possible, and then we're going to start adding it to the reaction. So it took about 4 total milliliters of hot methanol to get the P-nitrobenzaldehyde to completely dissolve. And then once we got it all dissolved, um, we're just going to add it to the top of the reaction through the reflux condenser. Okay, and the last thing we need to add for the reaction to begin is the sodium carbonate. So you can see the concentration of the reagent bottle that we used. And we're adding about 20.3 milliliters of this solution. So 
So as soon as we added the sodium carbonate solution, that was our zero time point for the reaction. So you can see what it looks like at the beginning. And then we'll show you um, some slides so you can compare what it looks like every 15 minutes that it's been going through reflux. So every 15 minutes, um, we took a small amount of the reaction mixture and to try to analyze it by TLC. So we put them all in one TLC plate. That way we can show them all to you guys at once. And then you guys can analyze uh, what was going on throughout the reaction. So here's what that TLC looked like once it was uh, fully developed. And we visualized it by UV light. Um, on the first column, um, we have to acetylpyridine, um, which I'm highlighting here. And then second column, we have p-nitrobenzaldehyde. Um, and then we have lanes at 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes. So for that 15 minute, it's kind of hard to tell what's really going on. Maybe there's a little bit of an overlap with the starting materials. Um, but then you can see that there's a small amount of something that's starting to form at the bottom. And then once 30 minutes has passed, you can see that there's clearly a major spot at the top. And the spot at the bottom doesn't seem to be getting much bigger throughout the reaction. And then it looks like it actually goes away after 60 minutes. Um, so it looks like uh, there's a major spot forming at the top. And it's kind of close to the 2-acetylpyridine. But later on, you'll see that it's actually a different product. The workup for this reaction is pretty straightforward. All we're doing is just filtering our reaction mixture um, and we're washing with cold water. So here we have some cold water. We're just going to rinse out the rest of the reaction mixture and then we're going to filter it. And so here's a close-up of what that product looks like for the elevated temperature reaction. So it's slightly yellow in color and it's a uh, solid. So while our product um, kept drying, um, we took one last TLC plate of our, of our final product. Um, so on this TLC plate, you can clearly see that the starting materials are different than the product that we isolated. Uh, but to confirm that, um, we're going to use melting point as well as IR. So here's what the reaction product looked like after um, we let the product dry for a few days. So once again, for the room temperature reaction, we started out by weighing out p-nitrobenzaldehyde. So here's how much we weighed out. Um, then we added the 2-acetylpyridine to um, a round bottom flask that already had the deionized water. Uh, we added 0.448 milliliters, once again, just like the elevated temperature reaction. So again, just as we did for the previous reaction setup, we're going to dissolve the p nitrobenzaldehyde using hot methanol. So we added about 4 milliliters again, let that stir for a bit to try to get it as dissolved as possible, um, and then we're just going to add it straight to the reaction mixture. Lastly, we measured out the sodium carbonate solution, um, and we're just going to add that straight to the top of the reaction. Um, so once we've added that, that's going to be our zero time point for this room temperature reaction. And we're just going to put this reflux condenser on top, that way we can try to prevent as many vapors from spreading throughout the room.
The TLC analysis for this was done exactly the same as it was for the last reaction. So every 15 minutes we took a little bit of the reaction mixture um, and uh, spotted it on the TLC plate. So here's what that TLC plate looked like. Unfortunately it looks like some of the spots started to merge. So here's our 2-acetylpyridine, um, which should be a little bit more to the left here. And then our P-nitrobenzaldehyde, this big spot at the top, should be a little more to the left as well. Um, and here's our 15 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute, and then 60 minute lanes. Um, to make it easier, we also just circle the spots on the next slide. So you guys can use this to calculate any RF values. Um, that way there's less confusion. So once again, all we need to do to isolate the products is just do filtration. And then rinse with some water. And then here's a close-up of the reaction product at room temperature. You can see that this one is not colored like the last time and it's just a bright white solid. So here's the final TLC plate for the reaction product. You can calculate RF values a lot better with this TLC plate than the previous one. Finally, we let the reaction product dry for a few days. That way we can get a good IR and melting point. Um, you can see that it's got kind of an off-white color to it. it. just looks like a powder. And lastly, here's the mass of the product that was isolated as well as the melting point. Um, just a reminder for your final lab report, make sure that you include the full results for both reactions. That way you can assign the products and then compare the reaction at room temperature and at elevated temperature.